There are few characters in George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series that readers consider to be truly evil, as Martin writes complex, gray characters, but Cersei Lannister is definitely one of them, in my opinion. For this video, I'll be referring to George R. R. Martin's series, the Disney animated movie Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, the live-action Snow White and the Huntsman, the Brothers Grimm tale, Little Snow White, and HBO's A Game of Thrones seasons 1 through 5. Why not seasons 6, 7, and 8? Because not only are they not in the books, but seasons 7 and 8 failed to do Cersei's character justice. It's infuriating that Dan and Dave wasted Lena Headey's talent, because Lena Headey, the actress who is unmatched in talent and amount of bitch faces, is the perfect performer of the character we love to hate. Cersei's motivations are hardly gray. She wants the power of being queen or being the mother of the king, wants the respect that men give each other, and is vain, believing that as a Lannister, she is above everyone else. These are the characteristics of a classic fairy tale villain. The rule was hers. Cersei did not mean to give it up until Tommen came of age. I waited, so can he. I waited half my life. She had played the dutiful daughter, the blushing bride, the pliant wife. She had suffered Robert's drunken groping, Jamie's jealousy, Renly's mockery, Varys with his titters, Stannis endlessly grinding his teeth. She had contended with John Aaron, Ned Stark, and her vile, treacherous, murderous dwarf brother, all the while promising herself that one day it would be her turn. If Marjorie Tyrell thinks to cheat me of my hour in the sun, she had bloody well think again. The significance of the evil queen trope as found in A Song of Ice and Fire's Cersei Lannister is rather straightforward, addressing the consequences of vanity and arrogance. The parallels are very obvious and straightforward. Married to the king, though is the king's second choice and is likely the cause of the king's death, vain, jealous of other beautiful women, especially those living under her roof and care, obsessed with prophecy, conspires to murder the younger beautiful girl, hires hitmen slash huntmen to do her dirty work, searches for a girl and a dwarf, is visually transformed, and brings upon her own downfall. Some versions of Snow White have a stag as the animal that the huntsman kills in Snow White's place. In the original story by the Brothers Grimm, according to Wikipedia and this book, the huntsman frees Snow White and... Just then, a young boar came dashing by, and the huntsman stabbed it to death. He took out the lungs and liver and brought them to the queen as proof that the child was dead. Then she boiled them in salt, ate them, and thought she had eaten little Snow White's lungs and liver. In A Song of Ice and Fire, Cersei's favorite meal becomes boar after one kills Robert. The parallel is there no matter what animal is killed. But the fact that the original supposedly uses a boar is striking to me. The evil queen asks her magic mirror every day who the most beautiful woman in the world is. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? But when the mirror eventually responds that Snow White, her stepdaughter, is the most beautiful woman, she is jealous and plans her demise. Cersei takes similarly prophetic words to heart. In A Feast for Crows, a flashback is revealed in a Cersei chapter in which Cersei and her friends come upon Maggie the Frog, who drinks blood from their fingers and gives them prophecies. One of the prophecies she tells Cersei is, Queen you shall be, the old woman had promised, with her lips still wet and red and glistening, until there comes another, younger and more beautiful, to cast you down and take all that you hold dear. Cersei fixates on these words and her own beauty. She doesn't have a magic mirror, but she does have her twin brother, Jamie. When Cersei looks at Jamie, she sees the version of herself that she most wants to be, because she views Jamie as herself, but a man instead of a woman. Jamie's acts of love and words of devotion are what usually soothes Cersei and affirms that she's the most beautiful woman. Too bad she's a psychopath. The green light of the wildfire had bathed the faces of the watchers, so they looked like nothing so much as rotting corpses, a pack of gleeful ghouls. But some of the corpses were prettier than others. Even in the baleful glow, Cersei had been beautiful to look upon. She'd stood with one hand on her breast, her lips parted, her green eyes shining. She is crying, Jamie had realized, but whether it was from grief or ecstasy, he could not have said. 
And so when Jamie, her mirror, no longer answers to her, all hell breaks loose. There are several Snow White figures in Cersei's story. Sansa Stark is young, beautiful, potentially going to be her daughter-in-law. Cersei doesn't poison her with an apple, but instead tells her that love is poison. I see flowering hasn't made you any brighter, said Cersei. Sansa, permit me to share a bit of womanly wisdom with you on this very special day. Love is poison. A sweet poison, yes, but it will kill you all the same. Sansa also marries Tyrion, a dwarf, and ends up running away from King's Landing, and Cersei sends men after her and wants her head on a pike. Jon Snow is secretly the son of the king's preferred wife, has dark hair, has snow in his name, and Cersei hires Osney Kettleblack to get sent to the wall and kill Jon Snow, who, in my opinion, is the strongest Snow White figure in the whole story. But the Snow White figure that Cersei is most suspicious and active against is Marjorie Tyrell. Marjorie sat laughing with her father. She is pretty enough, she had to admit, but most of that is youth. Even peasant girls are pretty at a certain age when they are still fresh and innocent and unspoiled, and most of them have the same brown hair and brown eyes as she does. Only a fool would ever claim she was more beautiful than I. So in Feast for Crows, Cersei joins up with the High Sparrow and hires men to lie and say that they have all bedded Marjorie. However, Cersei's plan, unshockingly, comes back to bite her. When Cersei goes to confront Marjorie and rub the power in her face, she is hilariously imprisoned by her own allies. Then she is made to look like one of the commoners that she always thought she was so much better than. In Snow White, the evil queen disguises herself as a peddler and confronts Snow White, suffocating her with the corset, poisoning her with the comb, and eventually giving her a poisoned apple. In the Disney animated movie, the queen's victory is short-lived, just like Cersei's. The seven dwarves, enraged by the murder of Snow White, chase her up a mountain in a storm, where she falls off a cliff and a boulder falls onto her. Well, I guess the evil queen and season eight Cersei have one thing in common. This could also be foreshadowing of Martin's plans for Tyrion to be the Voloncar and kill Cersei. The evil queen's demise in the Grimm's version is different. When the magic mirror tells her that the bride of a local prince is more beautiful, she goes to the wedding. The prince then captures her. Frozen with fear and rage, she tries to sow chaos, but the prince recognizes her as a threat. He orders that she wear a pair of red-hot iron slippers and dance in them until she drops dead for the attempted murder of Snow White. This reminds me of how Cersei is recognized as a threat by the Faith Militant and forced to walk across the entire city from the Sept to the Red Keep. This causes her feet to bleed and humiliates her, although Cersei doesn't die. I also think it could foreshadow another way for Cersei to die. Dancing in the Iron Slippers symbolizes to me the queen dancing the dance of politics or playing the Game of Thrones and burning up in it. This also supports my idea of the Iron Throne being Cinderella's slippers. The difference is that Danny will abandon the throne while Cersei will probably die on it. Whether the cause of Cersei demise is Young Griff, Dragons, Euron, Wildfire, Tyrion, or Jaime, or Iron Shoes, we know that her story will end in a blaze of glory. Cersei, the evil queen, will not show mercy to the dwarf, make a truce, or stare at a window for two years out of boredom. Cersei is a villain deserving of a death as chaotic, deceptive, and twisted as she is.